The Sooners scored touchdowns on 10 of their first 11 drives on the way to a 77-0 win over Texas A&M. All the highlights are straight ahead on Sooner Football 2003. Angle to the right. Fake. Here's a look. A flop pass in the end zone. And touchdown, Oklahoma. A lot of this. And he's right out of body. And he's sacked. He is sacked. Sack. Sooner fans, about 30,000 attendants cheering their team as Oklahoma is the 89th Rose Bowl game champion. At the 9 yard line to the 10. And a 51 yard kick to the 20, to the 25, 30. Oh, what a great run. To the 40. He can go all the way. 50. Kick. Oh, it's blocked. Straight. Block. Third straight block this into the end zone. Hey, the Sooners are going to recover it for a touchdown. Short drop. Looks down the middle. Bob's a long, long pass downfield. Touchdown, Oklahoma. And the Sooners are Big 12 champions. Tremendous. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the show. Of course, the Sooners 10 0, number one in the rankings, all the first place votes. And, uh, Bob, it just, uh, it, it's hard to explain a 77 and nothing win, but the season so far has gone perfect. What can you say about the win over Texas A&M? Uh, excellent win. Uh, uh, really appreciate our players. Once again, their, their work coming into the game, their preparation, being prepared to play. Uh, assistant coaches once again had an excellent game plan that they, uh, you know, really implemented through the week, and the players went out and executed it. And any time you get up 49 to zero at halftime, uh, really everything was just clicking. Defense was again sensational. Uh, you know, not allowing first downs and just getting three and outs. Uh, offense, I, I believe, scored on. Uh, all but one possession in the first half. I, I yeah. believe that's right. And, uh, you know, touchdowns on all of them. And special teams were very good. Once again, our cover units were great. So it was just an all around, uh, really a well played game in all parts of it. To win 77 nothing is, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of different too, you know, in that fourth quarter, how to manage that and uh, let the clock get eaten up. And, and uh, you know, you don't want to ever be in that position. Um, you know, on the other side of it, you you know, you're always sensitive to the players who work hard and coaches who work hard on the other side. So it was it was just different. So what did you get out of it? Did, did you get a, enough of your first line players in there to feel like it was a good day's worth well, of work? Well, sure, absolutely. You know, the, you, when you take the field, uh, Texas A&M, the team that beat us a year ago, in the same situation virtually, we were 8-0, I believe, last year right. when they beat us. So. And, uh, you know, to come in and, and, and to play well, uh, offense was just sensational. Jason White was just, again, just completes his first 14 passes. Uh, that is, doesn't happen very much. It just tells you how, uh, how, how good he's playing and, and what a great player he is and competed, uh, completed 16 of 18, all in the first half, five touchdowns. Uh, just, just great play. Uh, run checks at the line were great once again. Uh, but our offensive line, uh, you know, running backs did a nice job stepping up without Ronaldo works. And then again, the defensively is just amazing. You know, we're, we're just uh, on everything that they were doing defensively. You know, and, and Jason White actually is one of the guests on the show today, and we'll have a chance to touch on so, some other things. But uh, it puts you in a quandary in, in a lot of situations. You mentioned coaching in the fourth quarter, but even with Jason, because You've had him out so much during this latter part of the season where That's true. it's almost like, you know, are you giving him enough opportunities to run the numbers up to win? Sure. you yeah. want to be classy. That, that's right. Yeah, uh, I believe being decent to, to people in other programs is the right thing to do and that people that are voting recognize that. Jason has been held out literally over a game, over a full game, if you want to count up the quarters and the minutes that he's been held out due to big leads uh, at the end of games and, and to sit out an entire half, um, you know, who knows what his numbers could have been. But I, I have to believe that people watching around the country see that and understand that if you want to leave him in there, his numbers, it, it just, you know, you just add on to him, you know, however you want to. But, uh, but in, in the end, again, these programs and, and, and being decent to people, I think is the right thing to do. All right, again, we'll be able to talk to uh, Jason, also Gayron Allen, the guy who's playing pretty well in the middle at linebacker. When we come back, though, first quarter highlights from Norman. Stay with us. The way we approach the game, uh, this week how we practice, I mean, you know, we had a real great practice this week, and 
and it just, you know, paid off on Saturday. And, you know, we went out there, we ran the ball, we threw the ball, we just did everything that we were supposed to and just worked out our way. Well, I mean, it, it, it all comes down to preparation. I mean, uh, you know, we played a really good game last week and then come out this week and we just came out and, and prepared well in practice. Uh, coach talked about, uh, you know, this one of our better practices we had all year, you know, on Wednesday and Thursday, and it, it shows up in the game. And, you know, that's something we got to look at, you know, next week coming in and, and showing how, you know, if you prepare, you know, this is how you can play each week. Mark, is this almost a professional team, the way that you guys approach things? I know you got class and everything else, but I mean, it all, you guys are so pre precise in what you do. Yeah, I mean, our, our coaches are re real good at that, um, reminding us to, they do like mental checks, and, and that's big for us, you know, before we go out on the field, knowing where you be on certain plays. I mean, and, and they pay attention to detail, which is, which is really very big. And I mean, I don't know details. I think I've seen uh, just throughout practice and throughout school days, and I've seen what the team is capable of doing. It's just a matter of you know execution and, and preparing to play. And you're not really surprised. You just you know it's there. It's just a matter of doing it. Bob, isn't it sort of like a team's on a mission and a lot of maturity with the way you handle practice? I, I really like the, the attitude of the team. They, they really are excited the way they're playing. And, and uh, they, it's funny, we have so much momentum and excitement right now because they like playing with each other out there on the field. It, it just They just can't wait to do it. And uh, in practice, I said that Wednesday and Thursday last week were probably as fine as I've ever seen us executing offensively, defensively special teams the way we were all practicing and it, it, it was a carryover and uh, and I appreciate the players recognizing it as well. Uh, if you guys had some game balls, I don't know, uh, offensively, sure, it, it all starts with Jason White, uh, he and Mark Clayton uh, giving game balls, both running backs, Kewan Jones, Dante Hickson, and uh, the five starting O-linemen, so that's quite a few game balls. And then defensively, we didn't know where to start. Uh, you hold anyone right there at 50 yards for the entire day, so we gave all uh, defensive starters for a shutout and, and hold them to, to such few yards, uh, all of the starters a game ball as well. Well, And, and Trey DiCarlo also well, on. Uh, he was a busy kick. guy. We're going to go to the highlights perhaps during this answer. But uh, seriously, your second unit, especially defensively, they played well enough to get game balls as well. Yeah, much better than in the early in the year when right. we had a few games. It was very upsetting the way they played when they got in there. And hopefully they've progressed and learned and matured through the year and they're playing better. And it's good to see them go in there and execute well. All right, let's go to the highlights. First quarter. Of course, down in Norma, it's a little bit chillier there with first-year coach Dennis Franchoni. There you can see the a little bit of the fog and uh, you know it really wasn't was it? bad once it started. Once the game started, it, uh, I believe it stopped misting as it was and, and ended up really a decent day. You know, once uh, once we kicked off and started to play, at least it felt like that. I think when you're playing and competing, I don't know what it is. You don't. You don't feel anything. You just you're just out there watching. You know, trying to coach the game. But at least for us as players and coaches, we felt it was pretty nice actually. Sooners win the toss. They defer, and Texas A&M will have it on the 20. And you mentioned DeCarlo. He did a great job of get touchbacks. You know, both ways. You know, there's a little breeze, a little wind, and, and with it or against it, uh, he knocked a bunch of them out of the end zone. He was just all revved up. There's their opening play. They catch us. Um, you know, just a little bit short in our coverage and uh, really almost had a big play right there. Excellent tackle here on a quarterback draw by Dusty Borchek. He gets beat up by Dan Cody. Good, uh, good play there. Force an incompletion on uh, third down, so we force a punt. And we got the ball here, uh, you know, near midfield, uh, the 41 yard line. Start off with the play action pass there and giving J.D. Runnels the ball. Now you got to keep getting J.D. the ball. He's, he's good with it, catch as well. That was a nine-yard game. And here we try and run it and lose a few yards. And here's Jason White, one of his first 14 strikes right there to, for a third down pickup to Jawan Rankins. Here's a nice play. Look at J.D. out in front, creates a nice hole for Kiwan Jones. Have the run. runners run? Really did a nice job. Uh, Kiwan Jones and Dante Hickson both together did a great job. You see? There's a, a perfectly thrown ball to Mark Clayton, uh, you know, circling back over the middle, hits him right in stride, and Mark such, uh, does such a great job running with it. Look at a perfect pass. You know, it's different if that ball's thrown behind him or he has to bend down, get it low, or jump high, then he's going to be tackled. As it is, he, he gets hit right in stride, and Mark does a great job running with the ball after the catch. And I guess Jason has done a nice job most of the season in uh, 
what, run checks or at the line of scrimmage, getting you into the plays you need to yeah, be Yeah, we'll see some of that as we go, but uh, he has uh, really managing the offense in a great way. One of three first downs on the day coming up here for Texas A&M. That is Courtney Lewis, pretty good back for one yard. Yeah, they're gonna get us on a, a boot pass where they fake it one way and roll the other. And uh, Antonio's not far off, just a couple yards. First down. Here they get just, a, again, a short pass. And there's a nice play there by Corey Klein. Does an excellent job getting pressure, drives his guard right back into the quarterback for a sack. There's a blitz on third down, nowhere to throw it. And there's uh, Derek Strait there with the tackle on third down. 42-yard punt Sooners, great field, go field position again, or not quite as good, 34-yard line, but you had great field position all day. Sure, and this, this isn't bad. We start off with the screen pass to Mark Clayton, and there he goes. Nine yards. That's a, a good run there on a toss sweep. Drug down from the uh, inside defender. Here comes a blitz. Look at a great protection to pick it up. And uh, again, there's uh, Jason White goes to his third read as you watch him scan the field. Comes back to his third option there, Juwan Rankins, for a perfect pass and a first down. There's a toss sweep. Look at Kiwan Jones out there in the open field, makes the first defender miss and gets a nice pickup. Watch it again. See Vince Carter out in front of him. See Kiwan makes the first guy miss him and gets up in there for a nice game. Was Lyman having a hard time finding a guy to block downfield? Look at Kiwan. <laughs> It's a nice move right there. Kiwan kind of uh, was getting cut off in the hole by one of their D linemen and just spun out of it and had another nice game. Really uh, proud of he and da uh, Kiwan and Dante, the way they took care of the football. Never, uh, he didn't have it on the ground the entire day and, and picked up a lot of good yards. Bob, you'll only pass it two times on this drive. Yeah, we were having some success just pounding it and uh, so we just stuck with it. And, See a nice hole right there uh, up inside, and Kiwan sticks it up in there for a good game. This is the Kiwan Jones great series, and that one gets in. Great block in front if we show this again. Watch Davin Joseph, if you see him right at the point of attack, right there with driving this guy on the ground, and Kiwan Jones follows him in for a touch. Sooners go on top, 14 to nothing. DeCarlo, 65 yards through the end zone, and A&M will start it at the 20 once again. Good tackle there, Teddy Lehman and Gay Ron Allen with the, with the stop. And Stan Cody right running this ball down from behind. And here they come with an option, and Jonathan Jackson on third down has a nice stop. Short of the first down, he almost overran it. You see his athletic ability to come back and, and tackle the quarterback before he got a first. 14 to nothing after one. Stay with us. Second quarter when we return. Second quarter, Oklahoma on the move. Gonna have another nice drive here. Won't last long. Nice block out front by Wes Sims. And but uh, we jump up inside, and they smother that. We, we, don't, we lose a couple of yards, I believe, on that. And back with another pass. We get Jason, again, scanning the field. Great protection, which allows him to find Travis Wilson open for the first down. You watch it again, watch the great protection. Jason starts on the right side, and can't find anyone, comes back inside, and again, throws a bullet right inside for a first down. And those are big pickups, I believe it was second and 12, or third, second, 13 to pick up the first down. 22 yards and another big one here. There he is, he's got such great arms. Uh, so good on the deep ball, puts it right on the money for Mark who beat his man. And, uh, excellent execution, good play calling by our offensive coaches. Coach Long going after him deep here. And there's Jason, there's, again, nobody throws the deep ball better. Look at a perfect spiral, comes right down in his chest. Great, great play. Sooners on top, 21 to nothing, and a lot of people had no idea where this game was headed, but the Sooners playing very, very well at this point. Trey DiCarlo on to kick off again. Look at him, uh, this is against the wind, and he drive, uh, drove it right out of the back of the end zone. So Trey's was pumped up, I guess, to get a little bit stronger as he gets older. Dan Cody with the tackle. Second and six. Here they come with the 
a read option play. You're going to see us run that later in the game with Paul Thompson, but we play defended really well. And there's a good breakup by Brandon Everidge on third down and incomplete and force another punt. And it's a good punt. Sooners at the 18-yard line. Davin Joseph out there in front of Dante Hickson. You got to get Davin to box someone out there. He just ran out there and ran around everybody. It's not like him. Nice run here. Uh, good blocking. And nice run by Dante Hickson. You can see this again. Really good blocking out in front of him. Who's the wide receiver here? He comes back in. I believe, was, uh, I believe it was. I believe it was either Mark Clayton or Juwan Rankin that came in and cracked. Play action pass here. Again, Jason so good in the pocket, avoids the rush, buys himself a little extra time, and Mark Clayton comes open for a nice 15-yard gain. Nobody home there. We got uh, <laughs> got knocked around there for a couple-yard loss. Again, great protection in the pocket, and uh, there's pass interference. They kind of. Wiped out Travis. He's okay, but hurt him for a little bit. Look at J.D. Runnels out in front of again. Nice run by Dante Hickson. Hickson for 27 yards on that one. Nice job. There's Lance Donnelly out in front also uh, blocking J.D. Runnels. Wes Sims on that side. Good execution. There. Oklahoma will run for 342 net yards. Hickson for 131. You see Mark Clayton's block right there uh, comes in and from an outside in block on the safety to give uh, Dante a chance to get around the corner. We need to hit this up inside. You know, we're running into the boundary. Not much room. That's, it's not like Dante. Usually he'll turn that up sooner. Here's an excellent pass. Again, good pocket to throw in. Jason White finds Juwan Rankins in there. Look at what he's looking at. Again, delivers a perfect ball right inside for a touchdown. So the Sooners crank it up to 28 to nothing and Texas A&M has it three and out Oklahoma from the 22 okay I'm sorry we'll have fourth and 14 but we almost will take it over we just missed this watch Eric Bassey does a great job and he's just a step late and uh, but we're going to get a nice return you watch the off of the block we have a return set and he just gets his ankle uh, there otherwise Antonio had a shot at another touchdown pass where you fake it one way and sprint the other and there's a nice uh, throw again by Jason White to Mark Bradley for a first down and then Kiwan Jones kind of runs up in there hides behind his lineman watching he's going to get in there and no one could see him and then he bounces out once they all got in the pile so good run by by uh, Kiwan seven yards a touchdown it's 35 to nothing touchback by Trey DiCarlo coming right here and then Reggie McNeil takes over for A&M at the 20. Reggie McNeil of course had the big day, big plays a year ago in College Station in the upset. He has a quarterback, I uh, believe they're trying to run a draw possibly, but Tommy Harris has such great penetration, beats his guy immediately and uh, makes a great play back in the backfield. Tommy had another great day, he's going to force a fumble later in the day. Here we're he shanks his punt, so we're not able to get much of a return, but we're still getting the ball on the 40 going in. That's great field position. And this will be, I believe, Bob, the only sack of the afternoon. Yes, they uh, they caught us in a delayed play that takes a little while, and they had a good call on it, pressured from the outside, and got a sack. There's J.D. Runnels getting some of it back. Got 11 of it there. Good run there up inside with Dante Hickson on third down for a first down. That was third and four, and we pick up the first. Big play coming here. N another great play there. Uh, good throw by Jason to Mark Clayton. Mark does a great job again running, getting it in the end zone, sticks the ball inside the pylon. Well thrown, well executed uh, play. At this point, Jason again on the day is, is perfect. Uh, yeah. You know, has not thrown an incompletion. 42 to nothing, no incompletions, and Lance Donnelly there started to <laughs> perhaps catch that. I guess, I guess he knows it's, it's going behind him. So it, it, it isn't on his number, so he knows to let no, it go. Yeah, nothing against Lance, but when Mark's behind you, <laughs> let it go. But uh, that's right, if Jason's throwing it to you, it'll hit you in the chest. You won't have to reach <laughs> up in the air for it. Good play there by Calvin Thibodeau is really playing well for us. The defense fan has had opportunity to get some, some more snaps the last couple weeks. Watch this sack by Broden Poole. 
does a great job uh, penetrating, pushing upfield on the blocker, watching Blitzen play action pass. He's going to rip right through their tailback and uh, tackle Reggie McNeil down there for a big sack. Good play. About to say a future star. He's, he's he is he already is right now. Yeah, he's playing really well. Leads the team in interceptions and making a lot of plays. There's Lynn Magruder and uh, Larry Burdine celebrating with him. No first down there, and Jacob Young, 28-yard punt, and Oklahoma gets it midfield. You see, again, what they're trying to do, I believe, is really hang the ball up high and give yourself a chance. But that, there's an instance where it goes 28 yards, so you, it's like you had a big return. This is our, we're going to go into a quick hurry-up offense here, start off with the screen. There's only a minute or so left, and there's Jason's first incompletion of the entire half. It could have been caught. Here he comes for a first down. Nice pickup there inside to again, Mark Clayton. Well, great concentration. Sure. Holding and, on uh, to that one. Trying to, you know, we're, we're racing the clock right now. Trying to score right before half. Good protection. Steps up in the pocket. And again, they're hanging on top of Mark. And they, uh, they call him for pass interference. Again, great pocket to throw in, and he finds Travis Wilson inside for a touchdown. Great execution of a two-minute drill. That's Jason again looking inside. Great pocket. And another strike. Good play by Travis. Oklahoma ahead, 49 to nothing. Gayron Allen standing by along with Jason White. Stay with us. Welcome back to the program. The probably the most fun segment, Bob, that uh, we get to do is when you have some of your players on. It, it is. Uh, we've got uh, become a superstar here the last couple of weeks, uh -huh. right? Gay Ron Allen out of Orange, Texas, just east of Houston. If anyone doesn't know where Orange is, right, yep. Gay Ron? Yep. And uh, is a red shirt, red shirt junior for us who stepped up and is playing excellent in our Mike linebacker position. And uh, and then to your Right, Dean, uh, Jason White, with all the Heisman talk, Jason, we had to have you back on again. You know, usually <laughs> sometimes guys only get one shot at the show, so you're bailing us out and helping us with our ratings uh, coming back. You don't mind, do you? <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, Bob, uh, you, you had a pretty nice recruiting class. If you look back on it, uh, he was part of the very first class with some other pretty good players. That's right. Jason and I were just talking. Uh, Jason, you came in with uh, Josh Heupel, right, Torrance Marshall, uh, Derek Strait, um, Brandon Everidge is, you know, Derek. Brandon's still playing with us. Who, who on the team is still playing with uh, us? Corey Klein. Corey Klein, captain. Uh, Michael Thompson. Yeah. Um, You're going to leave somebody out there. Yeah, seems real like bad we're, at you, uh, but, but those are some big names. Oh, yeah. They've had great careers. They, they have. Um, yeah, Gay Ron, let's, let's start with you now, stepping <coughs> in there at Mike Linebacker. Um, t tell us why it's so different now. We've been bragging on you for a couple of weeks. Do you think you know, and other times maybe when you've been in there and, and later in games, you haven't had as much practice time. Do you see where the practice time makes it a little bit different? Yes, it makes a, a huge difference when you get in there and you're getting reps during the week. I mean, and when you get out on the field, you kind of see those things. You see them a lot better. Well, yeah. Teddy, Teddy was saying how much fun it was last week against Oklahoma State playing with you, that you were up there checking the line and telling them what to do. Was, was that the case? What were you telling them it, up there? Oh, we was just making our simple checks, you know, icing the tires and calling them on. I mean, it's real easy to make checks when Teddy's out there directing traffic. I mean, it's real easy to make my checks, so. Number 48 right there, and nice, uh, nice play here. Tackle, open field tackle on Reggie McNeil, and, and uh, yeah, yeah, I believe uh, also, Gayron, didn't you have a sack in this game as I, well? I wouldn't. So I wasn't sure. I'm not yeah, sure. I believe it was early in the game. And here you are help, uh, getting a little bit of help with, uh, with Brandon Everidge. Yeah, Ron, your, your size is so much different than Lance Mitchell, who is a starter, of course, out for this season. Are your styles of play different? No, I don't think they're too much different. I mean, our coach, I mean, he coaches us, you know, his fundamentals. I mean, that's basically, basically what we use out there. I mean, I think, you know, my size, it helps me get around bigger guys sometimes. But, I mean... No, I don't think Styles can make that. Now I see you in there right there with Lewis Baker. You had to tell Lewis a few things to do. Yeah, I had to. Yeah, I had to kind of direct traffic then. So <laughs> Lewis, of course, a true freshman. Uh, you you got to love your defense, though. Oh, definitely. Uh, you know, anybody, that, anytime you give the ball up and you're back out there within three plays, you tend to get in a good rhythm. What about the streak you had going? Do you, do you think about that kind of thing at all? You had a couple coming out of the OSU game, and then you ran off, uh, ran, I had the streak uh, yesterday. And I had no idea. That, uh, I didn't even know we threw that many passes. And I thought we ran the ball 
a lot yesterday. And, you know, we ran it well, so we figured it was working. So you didn't know you were 14 or 14 at one time? No. <laughs> There, uh, Jason, you, you, you know, we watch Mark uh, make big plays here, and, uh, you know, people will probably want to know when you go back, do you go through your progression or are you just looking for Mark? <laughs> yeah, you know, usually go through my pro progression, but it's always, it's always odd. Mark's always open. And, <laughs> and what better person to get the ball to? That's it's right. not as simple, though, is it, as some might think, of just dropping back and hitting the, hitting the guy on the hitch round. I mean, there are a lot of different things, and here's one of your beautiful deep balls. What do you like throwing better, uh, Jason? A deep ball post or corner? Does it matter to you? Uh, I think I like the post. Uh, it's pretty with, obvious. With our receivers, <laughs> it's, you just kind of throw it up in the middle and they go, they can go, go get it. Right. A lot of people, uh, you know, I've been talking to about some of our run checks at the line of scrimmage. What are some of the things you're looking for, uh, you know, in our run checks and, and why has that been so effective with us? You look pretty good there running on that boot pass. Your legs feeling pretty good. People always want to know. Change yeah. the offense, Bob. Yeah, they're great. I ain't had any trouble all season, and I uh, think they're going to be good. How about the play yesterday when he had him coming towards your sideline? He whips around and goes all the way back over. I think he ran for nine, needed ten. Yeah, he can rouse mad he didn't get those two extra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually thought I had the first down, but uh, apparently misjudged I didn't. it. Yeah. Yeah. How about the run checks, uh, Jason? Are you are you up at the line, and and uh, why is that so important? Uh, usually you walk to the line and it, it's good to be in two different plays because you can either pass or run and when they when they fill the box up for the run and they got eight in the box you don't want to you don't want to run against that it's, it's tough and so when we get the option of, of checking to a pass and that means usually one-on-one -on -one somewhere in the coverage so you know if they give you eight in the box you just check to the pass if they give you you know regular uh, cover they two two deep and spread out for the pass and yeah, you're checking you to check to the run, run. So, you know, it, it's huge, and uh, with our run, the way our run game's working the last few games, that you know, it would be hard to stop. If you didn't know that you had that streak going on the completions, you probably don't know that you still are the leading contender for the Heisman Trophy then. No, I, <laughs> I, I don't really keep up with all that. That's for you. Uh, he'd have to be in a cave <laughs> not to know that, Bob. That's okay. It doesn't bother him, though. He, <laughs> he just wants to win, just like Gayron, right? Yep. Gayron, is it, is it fun, though, seriously, to have a guy who leads your ball club who's this good and uh, uh, who's, who's good enough to be the Heisman front runner? It, it is. I mean, it's great to play with great guys like that. I mean, no, it's real good. Why do they call you G-Money? I don't know. That's something that the coaches really started, <laughs> I guess. Uh, it was really G, and uh, the coach has been saying it lately, so I don't know. Well, could you <laughs> Because he's been on the mark, I guess, for the last couple of games. Coach Venables so. gave, you that, gave you that nickname. Gay Ron, thanks for coming and uh, right. way to play and good luck on down the road. And same with you, Jason. Thanks. All right, Gay Ron Allen, Jason White, our special guest. We get back. Third quarter is a little different. Stay with us. Welcome back to the program. And Bob, we've talked a lot about you managing the game and how to let players when to let them in and, and keep them out a guy like jason though you know he, he i guess he doesn't care how much he plays no well he does he you know he's a competitor wants to be on the field all the time but right. he understands the situation you know you ask him that does it bother you you know that you have to sit out the whole second half and it, and it only his only answer ever is that he likes to play so sure he wants to play but he understands he likes being up 49 to nothing and he's played in a great way to help us be in that position so uh we also, again, being decent to other people we're competing with, but also, too, you want to make sure that you don't have any foolish injuries uh, because, again, we're still pursuing some goals and, and championships, and, and to have a, a foolish injury when you're up 49 to nothing would really be bad. What in the world can you tell a team up 49 to nothing when you're going to sit your front liners? Well, that, just that, that we've been in this position before, and let's not make the second half aggravating where we have a bunch of foolish penalties, we're not executing and, and giving up points, and... And let, let whoever's in there, let's play. Let's play like we're capable of. Let's play like we've, you know, like we've developed through the year and play with a lot of pride to the finish. And I uh, really appreciate our guys doing that. And the young guys that got in there and backup guys really played in a good way. Defensively, the numbers were uh, even a tad better. Let's go to the highlights in the second half. And it's hard to imagine the numbers being a little bit less. But uh, Mike and Brent and the guys had them really prepared. I guess they? we gave up seven yards. I didn't realize that after halftime. Uh, so that's that is really uh, yeah Mike and Brent 
Uh, I'll say it a lot, you know, Bobby Jack Wright, Jackie Ship as well, um, our defensive coaches, again, just a great, great game plan and really have our guys zeroed in and playing in a really fundamentally uh, great way. There's an excellent, again, you look at all phases of the game, we open up the second half with Jawan Rankins with the uh, all about a 60 or 50 yard return. And, you know, that, that's a great way to start again, starting with great field position. Sooners will run it. Bob, what is it? Every play except three? You yeah, know, we, three threw, we only threw three passes the whole second half. We wanted to, you know, try to give Paul a few more throws. And it was a boot pass. He was trying to touch it right over the guy. And uh, not, not too bad a throw. The guy just nipped it. There's a nice pickup for a first down to Travis Wilson. See, Paul throws a nice ball in there. Here he's going to fake the ball to Kiwan Jones. And you see other quarterbacks that can run, run in this play. And they're not the only ones that know how to run it. Coach Wilson, who, you know, has been with us for a couple of years now, really was a master at developing this play when he was at Northwestern and understands it. And we understand it. Our offense does. And Paul does an excellent job executing it. And uh, we, we, we can do run some of those plays that everybody seems to like to watch so much, too. 29 we, yards. And you got to remember about this guy, folks. He's a 7 1 high jumper coming out of Leander, Texas. Yes. And uh, he does a nice job here this entire second half. Good, good defense again. Nowhere to go inside there. Uh, Dusty Dvorak, Dante Nicholson. Here's a blitz. Petty gets him running first, and then you see Jonathan Jackson with his great speed running down Reggie McNeil out of bounds. Three and out. The punt. Sooners get it. Give it to Kiwan Jones, and another excellent run by Kiwan. There's Paul again with a nice strike right over the middle, uh, right inside on a slant route to Kiwan Rankins. And Juan uh, does a nice job. Juan's playing great for us and reminds you a little bit of Mark the way he plays. Watch him running with the ball. And excellent athlete. Good throw there by Paul. So from here on out, we're not going to throw it again. There's Paul again with pulling the ball like you see a lot of quarterbacks do and running up inside for first down. So there's approximately 11 minutes to go here in the third quarter and there will be no more passes. 26 minutes plus. We still want you to watch the show, just not, There's just no passes. A lot of good running. There's uh, again Dante Hickson with a good strong run on the end, outside. Led there by Sean Ferrier. Walk on fullback for us. You see Brandon Jones with the knockdown. Hickson goes for 21. Nothing there inside. Still nothing in there. Now Paul's going to, we're going to fake the run again in here. He reads it up inside and runs over the uh, safety in for a touchdown. So that time, Bob, he goes. This up was the a design. Yeah, this was a design play to go up inside. You see his kick out block coming right there by Chris Messner, I believe, a freshman offensive lineman. At, at, Gets the kick out block for him, and Paul does a nice job sticking it inside for a touchdown. Pretty strong one once you got hit, huh? Yeah, Paul's a tough guy. He's uh, a lot of character to him and continues to make improvements. 63 to nothing. That was an eight play drive, 65 yards. There's Gay Ron again on the point of attack. Some help from Calvin Thibodeau. Look at that good form up tackle. Good position on the ball. Derek Strait almost intercepts this right there. Jumps in front of the slant and just misses it. There's another blitz. Great job by Calvin Thibodeau reaching around his block. Makes a great sack. Watch Calvin. Uh, great play here. Reaching around while being blocked. and just yanks him down by the collar. Good play on third down. Forced another punt. There goes Paul again. He keeps it. Has a little option, has an option to go uh, play with that, to pitch it to Dante Hickson if he wants. And you see now they're waiting for Paul to keep the ball. So the DN widens here. He thinks Paul's going to keep it, and that, that helps create the seam up inside there for Dante Hickson. There's Dan Towns in there in front of uh, Kiwan, uh, not Kiwan, but Dante Hickson there. Freshman fullback for us, true freshman. Hickson getting a boatload of carries on this drive. 
good, good blocking up inside there with a nice, good size hole there to run through. There's Paul again keeping it, has the option to keep it if the end chases, you know, the end that's on the end of the line of scrimmage. If he chases inside, if you watch, if he chases inside for the running back, which he did right there, then Paul's allowed to keep it and run around the corner. And that's what, that's what he's taught to do, and, and that's what he did. And, and uh, he read it great and uh, did a nice job executing. From the four-yard li line, Hickson will get two, and then he will come back and get two more. And that gets him into the end zone. Good job there, avoiding the tackle and making a good play for a touchdown. Right here, he steps through a tackle and gets it in. 70 to nothing. 10 plays, 68 yards. DiCarlo will kick off. And a return on this one. Watch Dennison. Russell Dennison's been great on our special teams, especially kickoff, and you see him run down there, beat his blocks, and tackle him on the 15-yard line. Again, great, great special teams play. You see him dip right underneath the block and make a good tackle. And Bob, I guess those guys have to have to run as though every ball will be returned. Absolutely, yeah. They, they're not anticipating it going out. Look at Tommy Harris cause a fumble right here, and Derek Straight picked it up for a touchdown. Great play by Tommy. Uh, Derek's about to make the initial tackle, but Tommy really, you know, punishes him. Uh, as you see him, he, he gets hit, but you see Tommy really finish him, and that's what knocks the ball out. And uh, Derek's right there to pick it up and score with it. And that is the 77th point. Watch Tommy right there, hits him and knocks it out. And uh, Derek's just sitting there right in front of him, so he grabs it and scores with it. And, and uh, Texas Oklahoma 7 -7. holds Texas A&M on the next series. That's the end of three, and the Sooners lead 77 to nothing after three. Oklahoma has it. Final quarter at the 42-yard line, and it will be run, run, run. Ewan Jones back in. You know, we only had, uh, with Ronaldo being out, um, the only two guys that knew our plays are Kiwan Jones and, and Dante Hickson. So uh, so anyway, we just try to keep alternating those guys, and there's an excellent run by Kiwan Jones. Really playing well. Uh, the last several games, he's really been a big spark and making a lot of good plays. run right there. Kiwan Jones a big afternoon as well. We mentioned the 342 net yards the Sooners had rushing. Kiwan and Dante Hickson with 24 carries each and Jones with 120 net yards. And Bob, you might explain what's about to happen here is you're not really wanting to score. Well, we, we aren't. We're just handing the ball off and you know, you're up, you have 77 and I, I just, you know, we really didn't want to be in the 70s. You don't ever want to get that high. So we're just trying to milk the clock and, um, you know, just, again, don't want to, uh, I believe that's just a sneak for a first down and, and just didn't want to be in a position to have 80s, you know. So we are we're just want to milk the clock and get it down and not, uh, and really not score. It's, again, I, you know, you don't know what the right thing is to do. You know, you don't want to, uh, you, you know, uh, probably more offensive to take a knee, you know, against them. So I, we're just so is that trying why? to snap the ball and, and uh, let the clock run and, and really didn't want to didn't want to score. And Bob leading Coach Brand, Dennis Franchoni out at midfield. And what was said here? Oh, it was, I said good game. Dennis, so, you know, wish us luck trying to finish for a national championship. And he understood that we, you know, weren't in a situation where we were trying to score at all. But he was great about that and he understood. and, and uh, you know, and wished us the best of luck to finish with the championship. And starting an 11 o'clock game, uh, that was a little bit better than having to wait all day and play a night game. Uh, it was good. You know, the, the, we haven't had many 11 o'clock games. And, uh, you know, the good part, you get right up and get after it first thing in the morning. And, uh, you know, and recruits and people watching your program get to see highlights and, you know, the entire day of, of what you did. So that part of it's good. All right. Stay with us. When we come back, we'll talk both about the Baylor Bears and where the Sooners stand this season. They stand in pretty good shape. Stay with us. Now for this week's OG&E Power Play of the Game. Man in motion from left to right is Runnels. 
White gets it. Jason looks down the middle. Fires a pass. Caught at the 33. To the 30. 25. 20. To the 15. To the 10. To the 5. Touchdown. Up on. Gray. That's Clayton. He broke the tackle again and went on in for the touchdown. OG&E. Power at the speed of life. And the food drive. Please help out the annual Sooner Football FCA food drive. Bring your canned food items to the Baylor game. There will be eight drop boxes around Memorial Stadium. In addition, you can make donations at Campus Corner, Sooner Fan Fest, O'Connell's, and Wright IGA stores. Last year, able to assist more than 250 families in Norman. And Bob, that uh, has been a thing annually. It's worked out real well. It really has. Our players enjoy it. Um, our FCA group here uh, does an excellent job helping put it on. Josh Heupel originated it. Is what yeah, it re right. really started all that. And, you know, to be able to help 250 to 300 families in this area is great to do. Don't know that the program's ever been higher. That's a big statement to make with Bud Wilkins at 47 straight and what Coach Switzer did. But there's it's uh, certainly uh, on a mountaintop right now. We, we've got a lot of momentum. Uh, I think what's important is our players uh, continue. Uh, what I like is they're really excited to play. Uh, they like uh, the way, you know, the, just the manner in which they're playing and, and playing on the field you know, together, uh, they, that excites them. Um, that part of it's good. It's just to remain focused. Uh, everyone, the fans and media, all want to you know, put you at the end. And that's what they are to do. That's what fans and media do do. But right. us as, you know, as coaches, players, we have to, ones that have to compete on Saturday. And everything has its time. And it isn't time yet. You know, we haven't won a championship. We haven't won, uh, we haven't even locked up the South yet. Uh, so it's plain and simple fact, you know. So no trophies are being given out. We have to earn it. And the only way to get it is, is to be ready to play against Baylor and to play our best and to continue the pursuit of the championship. All right. Congratulations. Good luck against Baylor. Thank you, Dean. For the coach, I'm Dean Blevins. Thanks for watching. See you next week. A Sooner Vision presentation for the Sooner Sports Network in cooperation with Sooner Sports Properties.